Hello people, I'm Sonali, the Melodramatic Bookworm and welcome to a vlog that has been four and a half months in the making and one that I've been so 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 excited to be making. Welcome to my Queer Eye Vlog. So a couple of days ago on the 24th of January, season 8 of Queer Eye dropped and, and I haven't stopped laughing and crying and screaming and cackling ever since. Queer Eye is one of my most favorite, favorite, favorite shows of all time and I don't say that lightly. I became obsessed with it last year and it has inspired me so much ever since I started watching it. I can't even begin to explain to you. My obsession was or is so stark that when I realized that all the cast members had written or were writing books, I decided on the spot that I had to make a video for it. So as a logical consequence, here's a reading vlog in which I read and talk about these books and gush over some of them. So without any further ado, let's dive right into this video and I really hope that you will read these books and if you actually do pick up these books and read them, I hope that you like them at least as much as I did. I am here today with a video, a vlog that I'm so excited to do but before I get on with more gushing, uh, let me just welcome you to the Queer Eye vlog. I have been obsessed with Queer Eye. I started watching it in uh, July I think and I finished like all seven seasons plus Queer Eye in Japan in a month and that's a record for me because I just do not get through TV shows that quickly. You ask me to read 10 books in a month. Sure, if you ask me to watch a show each season having like 7 to 10 episodes then that's going to be a problem because I just don't get that invested but this was so freaking addictive. I used to watch it during lunch, I used to watch it late night and it was just so wholesome this show. For those of you who don't know, Queer Eye More Than A Makeover is a reboot of a show that aired I think in the early 2000s, it was called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy at that time. Queer Eye More Than a Makeover has five queer people, each having expertise in a different facet of life and they help make people's lives better. I cried like a baby when I watched these episodes. I'm like, this is wholesome. Why am I crying? So when I got this idea, I was like, there's no resistance at all. I was like, immediately the idea came and I was like, yes. Queer Eye has five people. First is Anthony Porowski, who is the food and wine expert. Then is Bobby Burke, who is the interior design expert. And then is Jonathan Van Ness, who is the grooming expert. Dan Franz, who is the fashion expert. And then there's Karama Brown, who is the culture expert. And all of these people come together to make their heroes' lives better in not just physically, but also mentally, emotionally, culturally. And it is just one of the best things I've ever watched. I am obsessed. You should see how I spoke about it when I was watching it. I was like, give me all the episodes. I could watch three, four episodes in a day and not tire of it. The best thing to ever happen on Netflix. So obviously, as a consequence, I decided to read all of the books that were written by the Queer Eye cast. And I've already gotten through two of them, which I will speak about now. And then in subsequent clips, you'll see as I finish reading each book. Okay, so let me go through all the books that these people have written. Uh, first is Anthony Porowski, who is the food and wine expert. And he has two books out. One is Anthony in the Kitchen, uh, which came out in 2019. And the second is Anthony Let's Do Dinner, which came out in 2021. I didn't find the second book, but this is one I have right here. I got it from the library and I'm so excited because he has some of the most interesting tips, easy kitchen hacks, and I'm so looking forward to reading this book. And then is Bobby Burke, whose book Right at Home is releasing this year. It's supposed to release on the 12th of September in the US, but since Australia has such a gap between when it releases and when it actually re releases here, I, I'm just hoping. Next is Jonathan Van Ness. They have three books out, I think. First was Over the Top, A Raw Journey to Self-Love. It is a, a non-fiction memoir of sorts, or it's an autobiographical account. This children's book, I think this is uh, what I think it is. 
It's called Peanut Goes for the Gold. These are the two books that I have. I have also read their later book, which is called Love That Story, Observations from a Gorgeous gorgeously queer life and that is one of the best things i've read it was released in 2022 and in that book which is a series of essays uh, jonathan talks about different things not just their life but they talk about politics they talk about how queer culture is in their hometown and then karama brown he has three books out uh, one i got a kindle edition very recently karamo my story of embracing purpose healing and hope which was published in 2019 it is about 300 350 pages long and it is obviously autobiographical then there is i am perfectly designed which is again a children's book uh, with jason rachel brown and illustrated by anusha sayed i think jason is uh, his son the one that i cannot find anywhere is i am okay to feel which was released in 2022 this was released in 2019 and last but not the least is stan france and his book is called naturally tan this was released in 2019 and he talks about his experiences growing up gay and he is from a south asian family he is pakistani but settled in south yorkshire and he talks about his experiences i haven't obviously started reading these books but i am super excited for them oh but i forgot to tell you that there's also a book by the whole cast which is called queer i love yourself love your life and in this book there are different sections all the cast talks about their life their you know the salient points of their lives they have different tips and tricks for for example bobby has loves for interior design karama talks about how to make your life better in quality then anthony has food and wine tips jonathan has grooming tips stan has fashion tips and this was great i will talk more about it in a minute so welcome to a very queer eye vlog in which i will be talking uh, reading and talking to you about all the books written by the cast of queer eye i can't hold this up because so many of these are hard covers and they are heavy so yes let's dive right into this vlog and let me share with you my thoughts about the books that i've already read from this huge list okay from the physical copies that i have right now the only book that i have read is this one which is queer i love yourself live love your life by the whole cast and they have some really amazing tips in here it's not like you haven't seen this before if you watch the show but seeing them in written format it just drills it even for further into your brain and it's one of the most heartwarming books i've ever read but it's also very practical because of all the tips that they are giving like i've mentioned before bobby gives interior design tips karamo gives uh, tips on how to infuse it with more quality how to make it better anthony has some cooking tips some kitchen hacks and a lot of other things jonathan has grooming tips makeup cosmetics how to pamper your skin how to pamper your hair how to practice self love and then tan has fashion tips obviously and i loved all of them all of the tips that they've given in here of course all of them don't apply to me and as they say choose what makes you feel good i just feel like these are some tips that i am going to try in my life as well some of these tips at least which i was suit me reading this was great because it's not just like do this you do this 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 they are very kind and compassionate when they do it they are kind compassionate funny hilarious if you will and i love this book i know i'm going to get a copy of this for my own collection one day because i would love to revisit what they are saying in this book oh i love this cast man i love this show so much And the first book that I read from this lot was Love That Story by Jonathan Van Ness which I've already spoken about. So yeah, this is the start of this very 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 exciting vlog for me at least. So yeah, I'll be starting a couple of these books of of course not this one because I've already read it. I'll be starting a couple of these and I will see you in a new clip once I finish reading any of those books and I have a few updates for you. Hi there. Today is the 19th of September and quite a few days ago I finished reading two more books for this vlog. So the first one is 
I Am Perfectly Designed by Karama Brown and this is a very short book you can finish it in like 10 minutes flat and it is a picture book about the relationship between a father and his son obviously the father son duo in this book are Karamo and his son Jason and it's just so beautiful to see because he instills the amount of self-respect self-esteem self-love into his son by saying telling him that he is perfectly designed and teaching him how to cope with situations that arise in his life the relationship between them it's just so pure so beautiful to see it just made me so nostalgic for my own parents i enjoyed this book to no end it made me emotional a picture book made me emotional think and I, I'm just a little annoyed that these books are not available uh, in India at reasonable prices. Neither in India nor in Australia. And I'm like, this is the kind of stuff you need to market more. You need people to read more. I actually finished this second, and I, but I wanted to talk about it first for whatever reason. The first book in this set of two books that I finished, I don't even know. I think I don't even think I make any sense anymore. Okay. And that book is Peanut Goes for the Gold by Jonathan Van Ness. And in this book, Peanut does things their own way and uh, they have their own style, they have their own charisma and they have a friend circle, uh, they have a family that is so supportive of what they are doing and the way they just keep going and the way they have that self-confidence, they have that trust, that drive and uh, to just keep practicing because that is how you become good at something and still to know that i'm doing my best i'm giving my best and to have that circle around you to cheer applaud you for doing whatever it is you're doing it was great it's a great motivational book another picture book this is which you can finish it in like five minutes of course as adults we might not find these books to be as impactful as some of the prose books that we read but now and again pick up a book like this you see how peanut is going through their day how they are going through their routines and it it is sure to fill you with joy so yeah these are the Two books I finished since that day long long ago when I started this vlog. So yeah, I'll see you when I have a new update to give. Hi there, today is the 12th of October and a couple of days ago I finished reading the next book for this vlog which is Naturally Tan by Tan France. And this is such a funny but deep memoir. In this, Tan France goes through his lifetime, how he was brought up, what were his experiences and how he knew about himself, how he found himself in his relationship with his husband, Rob France, his whole coming up in the industry, the way he became a stylist. And it's not just details of this, this and this that he did. Also what he experienced, racism, homophobia, how being from a South Asian family who, and he was brought up in South Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, I think, how he grew up and how it all factored in. That's what he's talking about here. There's this interview uh, where the Queer Eye cast uh, did with uh, the YouTube channel called Spectrum. There was this game in which they had to choose a Queer Eye member who tells it like it is and everybody unanimously chose Tan. And in that he says, I'm just British and that is exactly what he shows in this book as well. He has that British humor but he also has that openness. He defines that. He tells it like it is. Like, I'm not going to listen to you, talk down to me, etc, etc, etc. But he also talks about how it affected him, how it still affects him. All of the books that I read written by these people, it just makes me so happy while I'm affected by what they're saying. I am, I get annoyed at everybody who has treated these people badly. I just want to go and shake them till their teeth rattle. But I also laugh at how they put these things. They let us into their worlds and their definitions of relationships, the definitions of love, what it means to be in love of friendships and what it means to have social relationships and how that journey was especially in this book Tan talks about how his journey was and how he went from being a common person 
to a celebrity and how his life changed and how he is still the same old Tan France. And he says in this book that celebrities are just, just like you and me. And although I don't believe that, I want to believe Tan when he says it. So that was me reading Naturally Tan by Tan France and I absolutely loved it. I laughed, I got sad, I got annoyed at certain people who I don't even know the names of. It's just a lot of emotion but also he will make you laugh. Read this book. I will see you again when I have an update next and I'm hoping that that will be very soon. Until then, read this book. Hi there, today is the 19th of October and last night I finished reading another book for this vlog and that is Antony in the Kitchen by Antony Porowski and written along with Mindy Fox. <laughs> you know I love this man, okay? He is amazing at what he does. He has a lot of easy recipes that he shares with us on the show. He uh, shares about how to make your life easier in the kitchen, how to make your life healthier and easier. And that conjunction is sort of what is important for us in this time and age. And I love him for that. But in this book, there are so many recipes that I feel like it was just too roundabout. I didn't connect with them even if they were just vegetarian. The non-vegetarian recipes which make up about half this book, I skipped right over them because we don't eat non-vegetarian. But the others that we do eat, some of them were so roundabout and it felt like he was using a very highbrow way of doing things, about telling us things. And the recipes themselves were all highbrow. I use highbrow a lot because my husband said that yesterday, why is this so highbrow when I showed him one recipe and that sort of stuck with me. It's his term but I feel like that encapsulates perfectly what the recipes in this are. There are a few that are very easy. He uses like one or two paragraphs, small paragraphs to uh, describe them, to describe how, how to go about making them but otherwise it felt like bro how am I going to make all of these but that's not the fault of him or the recipes to be honest and for everything he uses parmigiano reggiano he says chives at which i realized very recently while i was reading this book that it's just spring onions okay terminology differs the way we make food differs and as i was reading this i realized that i might not make a lot of the recipes that he's mentioning in here maybe if i'm feeling way too fancy but we don't bake i don't bake so uh, that's also not going to happen but having read these and having made a note of the possibilities that was something I think and to read about his Polish experience, about his experience growing up related to food, it was sort of eye-opening in its own way. I won't say this gave me full value but I have made note of a few recipes. It just felt that disconnect because of how he was saying it. Then again, as I've mentioned before, in almost every cookbook, you will find recipes that are there for some people, that are not there for them, that are there for some other people, etc, etc. You get my point. If you don't eat non-vegetarian food, then this is a book that you'll have to keep with you, that you'll have to mark so that you remember that, okay, this is also something that I can make. Okay, so that was the next book that I read for this vlog and I have to return this. Actually, I have to return all of these. Yeah, we, go, we are going right now to return all of these books and I have requested for the remaining books in the list. So I'll see you once I have a new update to give you. I'll be starting a new book for this vlog in a couple of days. Uh, I, it's most likely going to be Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness. So once I finish reading that, I will see you again. Until then, if you're able to get your hands on them, read these books and Hi there, today is the 26th of October and yesterday I finished reading the next book for this vlog, which was 
Over the Top, A Raw Journey to Self-Love by Jonathan Van Ness. This is JVN's memoir and in this JVN talks about their childhood, their relationship with their parents, their uh, siblings, the people in their uh, little town of Quincy, Illinois, how they grew up, what they had to do to get to the point that they are right now. And not all of it is pretty, but to see how they've overcome all of this and to see the point at which they are today Day, not just in the way they carry themselves but also in the way that they advocate for self-love for equality for diversity and for so many other beautiful things it just fills my heart and this is a book that is just so raw you can feel that energy radiating off of it and when JVN starts telling you their secrets about what the world was like for them being a queer kid in a small American town there's a whole lot that explains JVN's career and character growth to see that it makes me happy as well as it makes me sad that they had to go through all of this in the first place and all I want to do is go and give them a big hug and tell them that everything's okay but then again seeing how they are and seeing how they spread love into the world I think they know that this again is one of my favorite books of the year my heart goes out to everyone who goes through anything like this but it's not just pain the way Javian has handled telling their story in this book there's a lot of humor but there's a lot of strength there's a lot of gravity but there's also a bit of lightness I don't know how all of these elements work together but JVN has done it they have put across this message in such a beautiful manner in and they say somewhere that I hope that some uh, queer kids will read this book and find some courage some hope in their story and I think that a lot of people will find whatever they were intending to like they will feel that they are not alone. I don't have words to say except that JVN is one of my favorite people in the whole world and I'm so glad I got to read about their story and that they allowed the world a glimpse into their inner workings. So uh, I have four more books remaining for this vlog and I have requested three from the library and a fourth one I have on my Kindle. So I will see you once I finish reading the next book for this vlog. Until then, bye and watch Queer Eye. Hi there, today is the 8th of November and a couple of days ago I finished reading the next book for this vlog which is the Kindle ebook that I had and that book is Karamo, My Story of Embracing Purpose, Healing and Hope by Karamo Brown, the culture expert. And this is Karamo's memoir of sorts, his autobiography in which he talks to us about what he went through in his life, how he grew up, his relationship with his parents, his parents relationship, his relationship with the sisters, the friends that he made, discovering himself, discovering his sexuality, his kids, his uh, queer eye castmates and the whole thing. We learn more about him and how he grew into the man he is today. The man who gives everyone strength but he also leaves everyone in a puddle of tears. There's literally in one queer eye episode one of the other guys said what did Karamo do to you? Because Karamo does a lot of good things for you. He puts you in touch with your feelings. He puts you in touch with what it means to be a human being and it is one of the most heartwarming things ever to see that someone cares so much that he is willing to have the tough talk with you to make your life better because as he says he believed that change should not just happen on the exterior it should happen on the interior as well and that is when things will change on the whole in a well-rounded manner and to see all of this how his change transpired how that particular change has led him to being a person who wants good change for other people as well for them to see the good in them to see the value in them and how this very thing led him to be a social worker and then go on to tv reality tv and then go on to do so many things before finally coming on queer eye and that's where i know him from but to see his backlist it's just impressive and i enjoyed reading this book a lot although at sometimes it felt a little too preachy like i don't want every page to be some motivational quote but it's karamo brown and i'm like i'll i yes i know what you're saying i will take that i will 
put keep it in my brain and i will make sure it takes effect so yes this was the next book i don't even remember which number i was about to do four but this was the next book in this list there are three more books remaining all three books are deeply contingent on what the library decides when it get, decides to get them so yes i'll see you after i finish reading the next book until then read these books and watch queer eye watch queer eye hi there uh, today is the 7th of december and it's been like way too long since i last filmed a clip for this video but i think i've been processing a bombshell that was dropped a few days ago a couple of weeks ago in fact and i'm like why this can't be and it made me so sad to see that bobby burke is leaving queer eye at the end of season 8 season 8 is coming in january and he won't be part of this queer eye team after that <laughs> and it just breaks my heart i wanted to film this along I go but somehow I couldn't muster the courage to do that but whatever it is I just hope that things pan out well for him and I'm sh as I'm sure they will okay uh that news apart the library has been coming through and I got uh, this book by very fittingly Bobby <laughs> right at home it's his latest book and I am so excited to have it in my hands even this next book Anthony Let's do dinner I think it's called that is also available and it became available today when it was only yesterday that I went and got this The point is I'm super excited to start reading this book because I'm sure that he'll have a lot of tips I'm crap at decorating okay so to see what tips he has because i love the work that he does on queer eye he has the most wonderful of aesthetic senses he, the way he brings together homes it's just mind blowing okay so that was that was the only update that i have right now so i'll see you once i have another update for you Hi there. Today is the 22nd of December and a few days ago I finished reading one of the last books for this vlog which is called I am okay to feel by Karama Brown and his son Jason Rachel Brown. This is a sweet simple picture book in which we follow Karama and Jason as they are walking around while a storm brews in the background and they get caught up in it and Jason gets scared and turns to Karama for reassurance karamo then puts jason in touch with his feelings telling him that it's okay to feel and to also question his feelings so that he can put them in the right place this picture book is an example of how to deal with children and the panic that they feel like instead of snapping and shutting them down parents need to be patient as they work with their children to help them through their emotions the goal is to work with their emotions to feel them fully and not to work against them It's a sweet concise book with exercises towards the end uh, that the child can do along with the parents uh, in order to help identify and express their emotions and it shows how a healthy outlook on the parent side will result in a healthy outlook on the child side as well. I love this book. It's a picture book but it applies to so many adults as well who are not in touch with their emotions so this could be helpful for them also i have two more books i need to finish before i can put this video up so i will see you once i finish reading the next book for this vlog until then hello hello today is the 18th of january and yesterday i finished reading the penultimate book for this vlog which was right at home by bobby burke who is the interior design expert on queer eye and now i'm a little sad because this is bobby's first book and season 8 of queer eye is going to be his last So Bobby Work is a self-taught amazing interior designer and in Right at Home which is his first book he talks about home design in the most fun Bobby way ever. And in this he has simple yet sophisticated tips and tricks told in his typical witty manner and every single turn of the page will have you gasping because of how chic everything looks. He talks about colors, textures, contrasts and the effect that all of this has on your mental health and how 
as he has stressed multiple times in this book that disorganization is both a symptom and a cause of mental unwellness and that makes me question my own life but that's the whole point to question to make changes to your life to your surroundings so that your life is easier and the thing about bobby is that he doesn't tell you that you have to start deep cleaning immediately he doesn't force you to do it he just very lovingly with his characteristic funny banter he tells you that it's okay to start small and that particular thing it lifted me so much i can't even begin to tell you the biggest thing that i love about this book is the humor there are quite a few things in here that i cannot apply to my life but when the humor accompanied them i lost it towards the end he said plants are snowflakes and the way i snorted with laughter reread it roared with laughter again reread it again and then it just the cycle went on and that cycle remains unparalleled so basically if you're looking for home design inspiration then this is one book that you should definitely pick up and my last book for this vlog is going to be Anthony Let's Do Dinner by Anthony Porowski who is the food and food expert on Queer Eye and if his first book is anything to go by then I think there's going to be a lot of skipping the non-vegetarian recipes so so I think this should be over quicker than usual anywho I'll see you one last time for this vlog once I finish this book until then So today is the 26th of January and a couple of days ago as I mentioned at the beginning of this video season 8 dropped and I have finished watching it just this afternoon and now I don't know what to do with my life. That was Bobby's last season and there there are no more queer eye episodes in which these this fab 5 is going to be there and I don't know what to do. Anywho, uh, there is one last book that I need to be talking about so that I can round off this video. And I did finish this just a couple of days before season eight dropped. And that book is Anthony Let's Do Dinner by Anthony Porowski. And as I had predicted before, this is a book in which there are a lot of non-vegetarian recipes. Uh, most of these. Like a majority of these recipes are non-vegetarian and things that I wouldn't eat, which is why I skimmed through it uh, pretty fast and got through it. But I have noted some of the vegetarian recipes that he has in there. I might not make them, but it's good to have the, that option that if I want something fancy, I can always uh, refer to his recipes and maybe make a couple of them sometime. This is similar to his earlier book, which was Anthony in the Kitchen. But in this book, there are mostly dinner recipes. He goes from light recipes. for example like soups and salads to right up to the heavy meat based meals and it is interesting to see how he sections them off and he clubs them all together so that you have an idea that if you want light meals then this is what you're going to refer to if you want heavy meals or medium sized meals then this is what you're going to refer to and then there are easy there are difficult recipes there are a lot but he uses the oven a lot usually in a recipe book when you're talking about recipes you'd like some anecdotes to go along with it but if you are reading the same thing on a blog it will be very irritating because you want to get to that recipe you want to get to the point immediately and not just be uh, bombarded with the writer's whole past in a cookbook I would love maybe a paragraph or two of personal touch. I would love to know more about what makes this recipe special for the author. And even though there are a few places where he does that, it's not enough for me to think that okay, fine, this is a recipe that is so personal to Anthony that I feel like I want to cook it too. He just says things like uh, this was something that I used to see a lot in my childhood, uh, coming from a Polish French Canadian family, and that's it. It's not that I'm complaining per se, but it feels very impersonal and the writing too it could be a lot more drawn out. I don't know why I want a drawn out in a recipe book. I don't know what it is. For people who do eat non-vegetarian -veget food, this could be a gold mine and I would highly recommend it if you eat stuff like shrimp, scallion, chicken obviously 
lamb and the kind but otherwise i don't think i'm qualified enough to be talking about it and about the recipes in here so yes that was my last book for the queer eye vlog and uh, we have finally come to the end of this and i don't know how to feel okay i know exactly how i feel i'm sad because bobby will no longer be there in since from next season onwards so these were the last books that i read for the queer eye vlog i hope that you liked it i've loved reading all of these books even the cookbooks that i couldn't connect much with it was sort of a very nice experience because to see someone on tv doing such good work the fab five all of the fab five and then to read about their lives to read about what inspires them to read their work to read their creations it was something else for me i took away something from every single of these books and i know that these books all of these books are going to find a place on my bookshelves so basically at the end of it all i just want to say how much i love queer eye how much i love the work that the fab 5 do how much i love the fact that they are so kind and compassionate when they are dealing with their heroes and even as people on social media if you follow them they are such amazing people it just makes my heart full to look at what they do and to be following them love it love 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 it if you haven't read these books yet please read them and if you haven't watched queer eye yet please go watch all eight seasons they are available on netflix a season 8 is also streaming now please go watch watch it it is one of the most Well, not one of the. It is the most wholesome show I've ever watched. There's also a, there's a lot of laughter. There's a lot of tears. There's a lot of value in there. The, you will find so much personal value. You will find understanding, hope. There's a whole gamut of emotions, and it just makes you feel so, so, so good. That is one experience that I want you to have as well. So please. go watch go read all these books and if you have read any of these books please let me know in the comments below i would love to connect with you and i would love to gush over these books with you if you like this video like it share it spread the word and if you have anything to say about this video about queer eye about anything in the world let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear from you thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video until next time keep reading keep watching and add melodrama to your life